10 predictors of aggressive multiple sclerosis. These are factors that correlate with more disability, but I emphasize there's a tremendous amount of individual variation citations below. Number one, the initial symptoms. Observational studies find that those who have vision problems early on, as in optic neuritis, pain and vision loss in one eye, or sensory symptoms like numbness of the extremities, tend to do better on average, whereas those with motor symptoms, weakness of the limbs, or bowel bladder problems or brainstem symptoms like clumsiness and imbalance do worse on average. Number two, poor recovery from attacks. Those who recover completely or almost completely from relapses tend to do better, whereas those left with residual disabilities have a worse prognosis. This study found that people with more relapses with incomplete recovery had worse disability as measured by EDSS expanded disability status scale 10 years later. Number three, a short gap between the first and second attack. Those who have a long remission after their first attack tend to do better, whereas those with multiple attacks back-to-back -back early on have a worse prognosis. This study found that people who had only one relapse in the first few years after diagnosis of relapsing MS, the median time to develop slow progression, in other words, secondary progressive MS, was about 20 years. But for those with three or more attacks in the first few years, it was about 15 years, five Five years earlier. Number four, more disability early in the disease. Even in young people with relapsing MS, small differences of milder disabilities seem to correlate somewhat with long-term prognosis. This is a study of people with so-called benign multiple sclerosis who have an EDSS, the disability scale mentioned earlier, of less than three. If you look at people who have an EDSS less than three after 30 years of MS diagnosis, compared to people in group A who have an EDSS greater than three even after only 10 years, the difference in initial disability was relatively small but seems to correlate. Small disability early on begets greater disability later in the disease. And similar research has been done with other disability milestones. For instance, reaching EDSS of four moderate disability is correlated with future achievement of DSS-6 required requiring a cane to walk 100 meters, or a DSS-7 requiring a wheelchair. Number five, progressive MS. People who have relapsing MS, those who have distinctive attacks who may improve over time, tend to have a better prognosis than those with a slow, insidious worsening of neurological symptoms, in other words, progressive MS. Progression can be quite slow, but can accumulate over many years and decades. This study from the University of California, San Francisco, the MS EPIC study, found that for those with relapsing onset MS, only 16.2% required a cane or more assistance even after 20 years of disease, a prognosis which may be better than you would have expected. But those with progressive MS, even if their initial disability was low, most of them were getting worse as depicted in the dark gray. Number six, MRI features. Certain MRI findings are correlated with more aggressive disease. For instance, having more lesions overall, and this study looked at overall T2 lesion burden and found people with aggressive disease tended to have more lesions on average, though the correlation is not that strong. Some other features associated with worse prognosis are having abundant T1 dark holes. These are lesions that appear dark on T1 sequences and have been correlated with axon injury in corresponding autopsy studies. Shrinkage of the brain or atrophy is correlated with cognitive dysfunction and atrophy of specific regions like the corpus callosum can be associated with difficulty with processing speed, and atrophy or shrinkage of the spinal cord is correlated with irreversible muscle weakness. Also, lesions high up in the cervical spine or at the cervical medullary junction between the medulla in the brainstem and the cervical spinal cord have been associated with worse relapses and worse prognosis overall. Number seven, older age. Unfortunately, it's good to be young. 
young. Younger people are more likely to have relapsing MS, which portends a better prognosis, and they're more resilient to central nervous system injury overall, not just in MS, but in various other diseases. This study looked for correlates with disability six years later, and age was one of the biggest predictors, unfortunately, and you can't do anything about it. However, it turns out that absolute age, time since birth, is more correlated with disability in MS than duration of disease. And so a 20-year-old with MS doesn't necessarily have a better prognosis at age 60 versus, say, a newly diagnosed 40-year-old with MS. It's just that the 40-year-old has a greater chance of accumulating more disability, say, within the next five or 10 years, but not at a given absolute age. Number eight, being male. Although greatly overstated, in my opinion, there is evidence men have a slightly worse MS prognosis on average. For instance, this study looked at the percentage of people, men and women, who retained a low EDSS less than three, and you see it declines over time, but there were slightly fewer men than women, though the difference isn't huge. Number nine, serum neurofilament light chain. Neurofilament light chain is a breakdown product of the central nervous system that can be increased in various neurological diseases, including MS, and has been associated with MS relapse and greater progression. This study looked at progressors versus people who were stable, non-progressors, and those who progressed had slightly higher levels, though there's a lot of individual variation, a lot of overlap, so it doesn't mean much in my opinion in an individual person, but on a population level, it does correlate with progression. Number 10, stopping medication. Although our MS disease modifying therapies aren't as effective as we'd like them to be, there is evidence they work. For instance, this observational study looked at people who stop therapy versus those who continue on their medication, and the percentage that retain an EDSS of less than four, which would be considered moderate disability. And more people continuing medication tended to be less disabled. So although they don't work for every single person with MS, they are effective. I hope that was helpful, and I want to say once again that there's no single factor that correlates that strongly with future prognosis. I have patients who are older with progressive MS who are doing quite well. Many people stabilize and plateau at moderate disability, even with progressive MS. I have patients with very impressive MRI findings, but they're doing well relative to their MRIs. Maybe they have extensive remyelination of demyelinated lesions. So I don't want to post this video to discourage anyone. It's for informative purposes only. There's no one factor that condemns someone to advanced disability in the future. If you're interested, you could share your own story of MS and your prognostic factors for the benefit of the community. And is there anything I left off this list? And let me know if you have suggestions for future videos.